As you may recall from our sketch on B-cell maturation, B-cells develop in the bone marrow before traveling to secondary lymphoid organs like the spleen or lymph nodes. So that's where we'll be today. Activation occurs within the follicles of these secondary lymphoid organs once a B-cell encounters foreign antigen for the first time. But as with everything in immunology, things unfortunately aren't quite so straightforward. There are actually two different ways to activate B-cells, T-cell dependent and T-cell independent. To make these two activation pathways truly unforgettable, we'll introduce two brave bee archers who have slayed a dragon, and now they're returning to receive their reward. Let's start with the T-dependent B-cell activation path. This requires help from, and forgive me if this is obvious, helper T-cells. So here's our helpful squire to assist with awarding the dragon slaying prize. And just know that the helper T-cell, which is CD4 positive, needs to be activated first. In step one, the B-cell surface receptor binds to the peptide antigen. To symbolize this, we've got a bee archer who brought along a memento, proof of their bravery, the dragon's head. The antigen receptor complex is then taken up by the B-cell through receptor-mediated endocytosis, hence the arrow piercing the dragon's head stowed inside the quiver of the bee archer. Next, the B-cell will present the antigen on MHC class II molecules to the helper T-cell. And note that the antigen it presents will be some portion of what it endocytosed, since some digestion and processing occurs in the interim. To remember this, our bee archer is presenting the dragon's tooth to the helpful squire on a decorative pillow. That presentation pillow with its two golden tassels is the MHC class II molecule that interacts with CD4 on helper T cells. While we're talking about this, note that MHC class I molecules interact with CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells. Remember that CDs and MHCs multiply to 8, so 4 goes with 2 and 8 goes with 1. 